Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to do something a little bit different, something that I've been wanting to go over for a while. And we're going to take a non-working unit network project and see if we can make it work. So we've got this project here in two different editor windows. I'm going to show you what it's supposed to do and what it does, and then we're going to just kind of dive in. I'm going to look through the code, see if we can figure out what the problems are, and see if we can just get it fixed. So let's hit play on both of these. By the way, I'm using a uh, uEcho to make it so that my changes go across both of these two editor instances. I did a video on it, I'll link that down below if you wanna check that out. So let's get started by hosting on this window and we'll just connect as a client on this window. And you can see we've got two things here. These are the spawners and then we've got a button here to spawn on the left or right path. So if I hit this one, I get a little guy, he walks down the left path it's kind of uh, the aspect ratio is making him go off the screen, but he's essentially just doing a zigzag there. And if I hit the right button, see he does the same thing. And you can see it on the client as well. But when I hit it on the client, we don't get that. Instead, we just get some errors. So we're going to dive into the code now and see how this is all set up and see what we can do to make it work. So let's start. Um, first thing I do is just open it up by double clicking on the error and see where the error is. And if we'll take a quick look at that error message, it was actually just a null reference exception, which probably means that the creep spawner is null. Uh, one thing to do just to make sure that it's not these button infos that are passed in, nice and simple to just add a breakpoint right there, hit attach, and then I'll just go back over here and click one of the buttons. Visual Studio should pop back up. Once it hits that line, there we go. Just auto popped up and it should break here. It's going a little slow though. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So now I can just put my mouse over it and see it's definitely the spawner that's null. I can check these button infos and they're both fine. By the way, I do use a plugin called OzCode in Visual Studio. So if you see like this extra little info there, if you don't see that normally, it's just that plugin. Very worthwhile plugin, by the way. I love it, but um, you can do all this without it as well. So player creep spawner is null. So let's take a look and see why player creep spawner is null. Where does it get set? So to do that, hit Shift F12 and find all references down below. And let's see. So here, if something gets spawned, where is this? This is in command spawn creep spawner. And then, okay, yeah, this is same spot so this is where it gets instantiated so seems like what's happening is this is not happening on this client at all right yeah so this is not spawning on the client we don't have a creep spawner do we and I guess if we look in the uh, scene hierarchy we should be able to tell the difference right away so we've got player one creep spawner player zero creep spawner and then, oh, I think I'm stuck at a breakpoint right now. So we'll just go back in, hit F5, let it continue. Now I can actually interact with the editor. And we've got spawner and spawner. So these are getting spawned over the network. When If we look at the code again, I think that's uh, right here. They're, they're actually getting spawned, but um, this is never getting set. So that's part of the problem. So what I mean by that is the command it looks like is probably coming to the server. The server is instantiating a new creep spawner and it's assigning it on the um, on the player controller on the server. And then it spawns this object over the network and calls initialize on it. But I don't think that um, if, I'm, if I'm reading this right, it, we're not actually setting the player creep spawner instance on the uh, client itself. So let's see what initialize does. Initialize just sets some variables here and this is a player config template which is a scriptable object so this is probably never happening on the client. Um, here, so what I'm gonna do is put a breakpoint right here in this initialize. I'm gonna stop both the client and the server. And then I'll start the server, start the client again and we'll do LAN host on the, the right one. I'm just going to always call and always use the server. The left one will just always be the client. Just keep it nice and simple going forward. So there, I've started the server. Now I want to connect 
on the client and see if we hit that breakpoint. And we don't. Okay, that's not much of a surprise. I didn't expect that we were gonna hit it, but I wanted to make sure. So initialize is never actually calling on this. Actually, yeah, if we look at it again, there's really no way for it to call on the uh, on the client. It, this isn't a RPC, it's not set up to go over the network, so it's never getting initialized. So what we need to do then is make sure that creep spawner gets set. And creep spawner is a field on this player controller. So when we spawn it, on the server we need to make sure that we set it on the client so let's do that let's see where's that spawn again so here we spawn it um, I want to just get rid of that for a moment and then um, I want to send a message over Ooh, what is this it's asking if it should be I'm just taking a look at this line wondering if it should spawn with network authority I don't I think it needs to though. Let, let me take another quick look at how this object is used. So if we look at the spawn buttons, what are these hooked into? They've got a script right here. So now we're opening up an instance of Visual Studio for the server version. So now I'll probably end up putting breakpoints on the server and the client. Tends to be something I do a lot at least. All right, any second now this will finish up. And we'll get a bunch of random beeps. Thank you, Windows. All right, let's mute that. Now let's see, um, how does this spawn button work? So it adds a listener to this, and then this calls into on spawn button pressed, which I assume is registered for in the player controller. So the player controller is handling that, and then it's telling the player creep spawner to run a command. Interesting. I almost feel like the player controller should just send this message. Well, let's see. Um, get rid of some of this extra space here. So we'll need a reference to this creep spawner at the very least. Well, what do we need it for on the client? What does it really need to know about the creep spawner for? Not much at all. Okay, so command to do spawn is looking through, it's finding a unit to spawn and then initializing that unit and the unit runs around. Okay, so I think what we'll do here is, uh, well first let's just make this creep spawner get set up right so that it's initialized and it's not null. Although I think we're not gonna be able to do a a command from there though so maybe it would yeah maybe it'd be better to just send the command to the uh, server through the player controller so to do that we just call something like command do spawn here and we do this on the player controller instead and we can just paste in those two values right here so this is the unit number and the path number to spawn on and then I'll generate a method for that and add a command. And then in here, I think we'll call the player's creep spawner dot. Yeah, actually, yeah, we can just do this. We can just cut this, paste that right in here. Um, we can get rid of the button info since it's already been passed around and um, yeah let's see what happens here so now we should get the command on the server the server does know the spawner so this spawn method should work Now this doesn't necessarily need to be a command though because this is running on the server so I'll probably get rid of that and rename this to just do spawn and let's fix the spelling here just got an A and a P backwards there we go all right, so I'm gonna build that, just F6 by the way, and then we'll come back in, both the editors should update, thanks again, UECHO, and then we'll kick it off and see what happens. All right, so I'll start this one as a host, and then we'll start this one as the client, and we'll click a button, and oh, look at that. 
There we go. And can we go the other way? Yep, we can. So the units, I think, are supposed to fight eventually. But they're not um, just kind of stacked on top of each other, I guess. But it is working. So we are functional. Look at that. Things are working and we're spawning both ways. This was actually significantly quicker and easier than I had expected. So I hadn't hadn't really had a chance to dive deep into this thing. Um, there is an error here though on handle attack. So let's take a look at that. I don't know what this is doing either. So we have target dot take damage template dot damage. Something is null. Let's add a breakpoint and attach. There we go. And let's see what's null. So the template here is null. Is that the problem? Yeah, template is null, target's good. What does template come from? Template is a serialized field of a weapon. Oh, okay, I bet this probably just isn't set on the object, which is probably more of just a uh, an issue with the version or the copy of the, the asset that I got. It's probably just missing from source control, but let's do a quick check. If we look at the prefabs and look at the creep here, I'm guessing it's got a weapon on it. Yep, and the template is set to none. So we'll just go grab a basher template. And then again, I want to save project here. Because here, let me show you why. So if we go to project, go to my prefabs, and I go to a creep, and I scroll down. See that the weapon is set to none. Now when I come over here and I save my project, open it up again, you see that now it has got the update. And then again, this is just that U echo thing that I keep mentioning just because I love it. I definitely recommend you try it out and it's totally free. So let's play one more time and just see how that worked. So this will be the host and this one will be the client and we'll spawn a dude there, we'll spawn a guy there, let him go over there and they're doing things. I don't know exactly how the fighting is supposed to work or how much of that's actually set up in this project. Like I said, I really just wanted to kind of dive in and take a look at the network issues and see if we could get that fixed. And it looks like we did. So let's just kind of recap and just look at it one more time, see what the problem was here. So the initial issue was just that the player creep spawner uh, was not set on the player controller when, uh, when the object was instantiated. So here, what I've done instead is just set the, uh, have the command come through the player controller and then pass into the creep spawner so that I don't have to assign that and I don't have to make a client authoritative uh, network creep spawner or spawn any other client authoritative objects. We can just do it right through the player and the player controller is just going to pass that command right through. And this system kind of works well, I think, when you don't have too many things. If it gets to a point where it's a huge number of commands, you might need to build a bigger system around it. But just going through this one object is a pretty simple, pretty easy way to, to make it all work. Just try to minimize the number of things that are receiving and sending commands. At least that's what I like to do in, in my projects. So I think we're good. Um, like I said, it's fixed. It all works. Or the part that didn't work now before works. So we're going to end it here. And if you have projects that are just stuck or have questions, um, Feel free to send them to me. Uh, I like to do videos on these things. Sometimes just answer them directly if they're quick enough that I can get to them. So just send them over. Don't forget to subscribe though and share with all your friends. Hit that alert button and do the other dozen or so YouTube things that you're supposed to do. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, bye.